Hi. Today we're going to do the chariot. It's my video response to Gypsy Chicks. Um, 78 degrees of wisdom. We have a ton of cards to go through, so I'm going to try to go through quickly. Again, made a list, marked out my cards. I looked info up on the different books that I'm using, 78 Degrees of Wisdom, Best Tarot Practices, Tarot Dictionary and Compendium, Compendium Ultimate Rider Weight, and Tarot Plain and Simple. All right, again, the 78 Degrees of Wisdom, based on the Rider Weight card, and the what we used was um, a man in the chariot, there were two beasts, wheels on water, rigid pose, the yani and ligum, which is this red thing right there, wings, veil, wand, the faces on the shoulder, city or palaces in the background, and the two different colored animals, chariot of stone and armor. Okay, so I'm going to go through some of these pretty quickly, um, just to buzz through. Okay, so on his shoulders are Urim and Thummim, which are opposites. One is happy, one is sad. This card means triumph in the mind. The sphinxes stand for life's mysteries. They're not pulling, but running ahead. The stone chariot equals karma of space and time. You cannot drop out of your destiny, but you can affect the direction it's heading. The crown of stars and canopy equals the infinity of space. It's a symbol of liberty, independence, and personal truth. The moon figures are polarity of the soul represented by laughing and crying. Armor, your heart on the outside and soft on the inside. The outer facade or protective shield we present to the outside world. The magic wand or hiking staff is a sign of preparedness, a sign of the magic powers within us. The winged sun is the ancient sign of the sun god. It's also the snitch in Harry Potter. It's the difference between victory and defeat. The ligamignoni is the traditional Indian representation of male and female, and here it's used for balancing opposites. City, land, and river, the figure may be unaware of what is going on behind. So that could be danger, denial, or ignorance of one's own origins. Okay, and then the next highest one is the Spiral Tarot, which is a new deck. Spiral, pretty cool. By Kay Stevenson. Um, I don't have a book on it, so this is short. The solar hero, through sheer determination and will, drives his apparently immovable chariot. As you can see that we have the two sphinxes, he's got the veil, the stone chariot, he's got the city in the background. This one scored a 10. Okay. Then we go to the New Age or Newsit Tarot. And this one scored a 9.5. It has the man, the two beasts, a rigid pose, the yani and ligum, the wings, the veil, the wand. I gave half for um, the shoulders. He's He's got on his, it's not really on his shoulders, but he's got the opposite. There you go. You can see the moon and the sun, kind of like on his breastplate. And then two different colored animals, and he has armor. The animals are male and female, and different colored. Okay, so the body and the cosmic dance of duality, we all have the possibility of putting the chariot on the right track, and the chariot being our life. Okay, and then nine for the Illuminati. I'm not going to read about it, because Dixie Chick, or Gypsy Chick, sorry. I was just listening to country music earlier, can you tell? Okay. And then she also talks about the Marseille deck. It's 
we'll skip that. And we'll go on to the Tapestry Tarot, which is kind of an odd tarot that I found at my used bookstore. I've never seen it before or heard of it. Um, it's by Yvonne G. Jensen from 1995. And they call it the Card of Heaven. Let's see if I can get this in closer. But it's kind of a weird deck. Okay, so the card of heaven re refers to Libra, one's attitude toward life, relationships, and marriage. Card of heaven in the Torah represents struggle, voyage, and success in the dance of the fine arts. Oh, in the domain of the fine arts. Oops. This is the tapestry tarot. It's kind of a big card, too. Like here, let's compare it to the Illuminati. This is a big card. All right. And the tapestry scored a seven. The color of your own tarot by Liz Dean also scored a seven. Obviously, let's see. We have a man, two beasts, rigid pose, a veil, palaces in the background. Um, two different colored animals, and he has armor. And then we have the Angel Tarot by Doreen Virtue. The score to seven also. We have a man, two beasts, rigid pose, wings, palaces in the background, and two different colored animals. And when you read about it, I'm trying to get this close enough so you can see the symbol on his chariot. It'll focus. Okay. Archangel Metatron uses a sacred geometric shape called a Merkaba to, to warp time, which enables you to instantly manifest your dreams into reality. Reigns are not real and symbolize his pure desire to control them. Number seven um, equals seeking out the truth, single-mindedness. Mind, this one says the astrology is cancer, and cancers care about security and control. They're tenacious and adaptable. So this is this is one I like, Angel Tarot. Okay. So that one's done. Next we have the Golden Tarot by Cat Black. Here we have a female. And this one scored, I should have written this down. And what everybody scored, that would have been intelligent on my part. This one's also a seven. Okay, so we have a warrior queen atop a plinth drawn across the lake by swans, coat of arms topped by a winged helmet. Victory obtained by working with others, not against them. Changing one's own behavior is more likely to succeed than trying to change the behavior of others. Wise words. Very cool card. And then we have the Mibberig. Probably not pronouncing it correctly. Um, the chariot heads toward success. To reach your own objectives, you must be wise. Your rational and emotional sides must be balanced. And here you see the sphinxes. Different colors. You can see his armor. Can't find it on my list. What a shock. All right. Well, it is what it is. Next one is Tarot of a Moon Garden. Oh, I get these so you can see them clearly. Um, adverse, adversity possibly already overcome, conflicting influences, turmoil, vengeance, success. 
Possibly a voyage or journey, escape, rushing to a decision, need to pay attention to details, urgency to gain control of one's emotions. Okay, and the Tarot of a Moon Garden. Let's see what this one's for. I wonder if I'm... Oh, six. This is a six. The Moon Garden has two beasts, a rigid pose, wings, veil, wand, faces on the shoulder. Okay. And the next one is Shadowscapes, which we're going to just bypass completely because Gypsy Chick talks about that one. Then we have the Archangel Paro Tarot. Um, and this one has 5.5 because we have a man, two beasts, wings. I gave half a point for a veil. We have palaces in the background and two different colored animals. And this one says, determination and self-control, career advancement, acknowledgement of success by others. And then we have the tarot by Jonathan D., illustrated by Shirley Barker. It's a Barnes and & Noble. And that one scored five. We have a man, two beasts, a rigid pose, a veil, oh, and a wand. And then we have the Mythic. This one scored five. We have the war god Ares, who reveled in fighting and associated with conflict and bloodshed. Horses must be handled with strength and firmness, yet not repressed or broken, or we lose the power and potency to survive and make our own way in life. Creative harnessing of the violent, turbulent urges of the instinctual nature take the consequences of his action and face the anger and conflict invoked inside and outside of self. Survive defeats and humiliations and become stronger. I thought that was pretty cool. And then we have the Fairy Tarot. This also scored five. This one's just kind of cute. My used bookstores had a lot of tarot decks lately. Um, after an ordeal among two fairies, the winner lets the whole fairy people know the final issue of the controversy, flying in the chariot of triumph. This represents the success he attained. I can't even tell if you guys can see this clearly. There we go. Cute little card. And then we have... The new Paladini Tarot. This also scored a five. This has a man. A rigid pose. It has wings, faces on the shoulder, and armor. And Number seven equals soul development, fate, destiny, security, and luck. It's associated with the Hebrew letter of Cheth, which equals sight. The charioteer resembles an Egyptian king, bold and upright. The moon equals the zodiac sign of cancer. You see that on his shoulder there. Chariot wheels burn with flames of gold. That equals unstoppable and in motion. The bird is the spirit of Ka or Horus protecting the charioteer. Struggle to maintain control of the self. Base instincts, instincts and desires that tug at the soul and try to pull the charioteer off track. That's kind of a cool card. It's the new Paladini tarot. Oops, they all fall over. Okay, and then we have the Mystic Dreamer Tarot. And that scored the Mythic and the Mystic. I get grouped up, so this is four point five. This one had a female instead of a male. We have two beasts. The wheels are on water. There's a rigid pose. I gave half a point for wings for the birds. 
and then she has a wand. Um, and it just said that she may be going on treacherous path, but you get victory through mastery. That's the mystic dreamer. And then the revelations tarot. <laughs> Next time I'll have this organized better. There's only four. Okay. And it says, he wins the race after traveling far and wide to achieve his goals. The crowd behind him roars. The crab on the shield represents cancer, which is ruled by the moon. Victory felt through emotion. The seahorses bring in the water. And the city in the background represents monumental achievement. Okay. And then we have Tarot of Love. The itch my nose and not think about it. Thank goodness I wasn't doing anything else. Okay, this one only got a 3.5. Um, and you can see this one's called Companionship. It's a pair of lovers that move together through life, companions and heart drawn through this world by the cranes, which are birds representing their souls. The crisscrossing reins equal the challenge to retain union found in loving ecstasy, both holding reins, so who determines the goal, the path, the speed, and when to take breaks? You have to develop together. Specific formalized partnership Commitments require recognition of individual concerns and clear communication of personal needs and desires. I like that quote. It's right out of the book for Tarot of Love. And then we have the Handel Tarot. This one's got a lot of stuff in it. Um, this number seven hints at the unity of the Empress and Emperor because they were three and four. So three plus four is seven. Um, confrontation of willpower with fear. The figure in the boat is self. The surging sea is life. The primal beast, just over the shoulder, just out of sight, is the connection to the sea of unconsciousness. And that's the chariot riding the waves. The boat is red, which equals energy. And the boat carries huge stone blocks that are pitted with holes. And that gives us the sense of experience older than civilization. The earth is represented by the stones, and as they melt into the water, both are female elements. Fire surrounds the figure, yet the figure is calm. The beast mix of boar and wolf with mouth open. The mouth open reminds us of the terror of darkness as a child. Violet glow above the boar's head equals the crown chakra, the most developed level of consciousness. So with Handel, it was recognize fear and overcome it. And I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but it could be Handel. I don't know. Kind of creepy back though. Okay. Then we're going to go on to the Unicorn Tarot. And this one got a three. Um, again, this one, the book said we have a female warrior. It's hard to distinguish. Um, doesn't need anyone to help her achieve her goals. So we have, actually, I thought it was a man, so I gave it a point for a man with two beasts and the palace behind. And then we have... Hmm. Oh, the Vampire Tarot by Robert Place. You can see this one's called The Wagon. Dracula traveled by horse and train in his native soil by day in a gypsy wagon. Black and white horses. You can barely see the black one. You can see his, like, whoops, feet over here and part of him. Um, that represents the opposites. And then the brass piece on the horse's forehead is a representation of the crescent moon. 
Now this is the Vampire Tarot by Robert Place. What I was really after was the Tarot of Vampires, so just know that there's two out there. Again, Tarot of Vampires is one that Gypsy Chick talks about, so we're skipping it. And then we have Lord of the Rings Tarot. And let's see, that one scored a three, as did the Vampire Tarot. Because we have a man, we have the palaces in the rear, and armor. Okay. And this one, we have King Theoden's Chariot. He actually rode a horse in The Lord of the Rings. Um, but he's in Helm's Deep, leading his army against the orcs, half-orcs, and men from Isengard. Thankfully, Gandalf arrives in time with reinforcements, but Theoden dies. But the war is won. Good movie if you never saw it. It's worth it. Then Gilded Tarot. Gypsy Chip talks about that one. Skip it. And then we have... The Aquarius Tarot, or Aquarian Tarot. Control over tension of opposites, triumph over all difficulties through perseverance, a balanced life, and success. And this one, let's see, also has a three. Because we have a man, a rigid pose, and faces on the shoulder. And that's the Aquarian Tarot. Then we have the Da Vinci Enigma Tarot. And that also scored a three because we have a man, wings, and I gave half a point for city and he's sitting on a stone so I gave half a point for that. And this one is called Imagination which was the primary vehicle for Leonardo's ideas and inventions. He used accurate observation with what his imagination conceived. And here's a direct quote. Whatever exists in the universe, whether in essence, appearance, or imagination, the painter first conceives it in his mind and then by his hand. I thought that was cool. That's the Da Vinci Enigma. And then we have the Tarot of the Princesses. We have Joan of Navarre and Aragon. Joan led her troops to the Fortress of Roses where she died. I don't know much more because the book is one of those very flimsy pamphlets. And this one scored three. We have two beasts. We have city or palaces and she has on armor. Okay, then we have the Celtic Tarot. And this one scored three also. We have two beasts, wings, and two different colored animals. The two dragons hold a crystal ball balanced on the mountain peaks. Different elements and natures balanced in harmony. Smaller dragons represent life events that are attracted to this harmonious balance. The high mountains equal the gateway to the spiritual realm, and climbing the mountains equals the commitment and determination. That's the Celtic Tarot. Celtic Dragon Tarot. Let me put that out there. Okay, then we have Legend, the Arthurian Tarot. And this one scored three also. So we have a man, two beasts, and two different colored animals. And this one's called um, the Battle of Mount Baden. Arthur's warriors follow him into battle. Speed equals accelerated rate at which events unfold. You need to keep a cool head and harness emotions. The black and white horses equal conflicting qualities, such as logic versus emotion and passion versus reason. The lunar crescents on his shoulder equal intuitive side, and the armored horses um, equal the connection with cancer, where it's hard on the outside, soft on the inside. And that's Legend the Arthurian. And then we have, I got this one for Halloween, the Witchy Tarot, because it's purple on the back. Okay, this one only scored a two. We have wings, and we have a city. I gave credit for the wings on the birds. Um, the chariot's the broomstick. And victory, the perfect undertaking, travel, movement, clever escape, brilliant idea, positive inspiration. 
Yeah, this is another wimpy little white book. Okay, and then we have The Ship of Fools, which is a black and white deck. And I don't see it on my list. Mm-hmm. Well, here it is. A two. Because we have a man and we have a city. <laughs> or things in the background. And here it's called the cart. It's an image from a Naren Schiff title page. And on that title page, it's combined with the image of fools thronging a sea-bearing ship. A she or a seaborn ship. Brant's wagon is full of fools on their way to the fleet to carry them to far off Naragonia, a fictional land of folly. We have many charioteers and only one donkey. So and then we have the Lost Hero of Nostradamus. Which I think we're into the twos, or are we on to the. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure we're into twos, yeah. And this is only two points. We have a man and wings. So, the two figures holding a strange vessel. The strange vessel is a sacred vessel and replaces the chariot. It carries an angelic presence, the angelic heavenly source of his prophetic visions. His being Nostradamus. Okay, and then we have the Fredella. This is also only a two. The Fredella Adventure Tarot. Um, we have Malachi August, known in New Babel as Revenant, the Scourge of the Shadowlands. He was born into poverty and betrayed by the woman he loved. He screams down the highway with his twin handguns, Wrath and Fury. He has strength to overcome hardships and adversity. Reverend is not a villain. This is a adventure deck, so it's got good guys and bad guys. And we have this enchanted Zerner Farber deck. Definitely not my favorite deck. I, I think it's just that it's too busy and abstract or something. I don't know. Um, I just wrote down determination. There wasn't much to that one. And then we have the Wizard's Tarot, which got a 1.5. As you can see, we have another witch. Um, her white hair represents that she's older than she appears, so she's got some wisdom behind her. And then this is the professor of astral travel, and she will help you cross into places of mystery, flying over crossroads of time and space. The Sphinx equals the four fixed zodiac signs. The witch's hat is a cone of power, the broom the magic wand. The pharaoh hound is her spirit animal that guides her at night, and the glyphs of cancer are on her hat. The crescent moon equals new beginnings, new adventures, and the Hebrew letter cheth equals fence. Fence marks boundaries but can't contain the human soul. This deck is a cool deck. Okay, almost done, almost done. I'm zipping through. Then we have the Hawaiian, which also scored 1.5. What did I give it 1.5 for? Oh, we have two beasts, and I gave half a point for wheels on water, because, well, <laughs> they're in the water. <laughs> okay, so we have ambition, and drive leads to completion. Fast-paced energy of the chariot is met with ability to control, lead, and win. And there really wasn't much to say about the picture. Obviously, she's swimming with dolphins, which would be super cool. That's Hazel Moon's Hawaiian Tarot. 
Then we have the Grail Tarot. And this is called the Ship of Solomon. Maybe if I hold it with both hands. Maybe I'm shaking too much. Okay. Solomon was known for his wisdom, but also his great treasure. It's believed that the Templars excavated around the Temple Mount and beneath the foundations. The Queen of Sheba had a vision of a direct line of Solomon, Galahad, who would seek and achieve the mystery of the Grail. And then my supernatural tarot. For those of you who love supernatural, we have Dean's baby. His car. Very cool. Then we have the Art of Life Tarot. Um, the balloon was painted by Paul Merce in 1878, and the quote says, Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Which is cool. And then I, I got this. It came in a purple box. This is the Voyager Tarot. I mean, it's, it's definitely a thinking card. Um, you know, the chariot symbolized by the Greek charioteer equals law of motion, moving onward and upward. Be at home wherever you go, your security is within yourself. Alrighty then. That was the fast and low down chariot card. Number seven. Got a long way to go. Um, I gotta quit buying decks because it's taking me too long to write out all this information from all the different books. It's my own fault. I've created a tarot monster within myself. So I will catch you later on strength. That'll be the next one. See you later.